Devil worship. Exposing Satan's underground continues. Welcome back. The subject is Satanism, and I've been asked repeatedly where the idea to do it came from. Well, it goes back to someone that I interviewed for our special last spring on murder and the frightening fascination verging on adoration that so many people felt for this person. A murderer who would have us believe that he is the incarnation of the devil. Here's Charles Manson. Okay, I, mill, I, I kill everybody since day one. I murdered them all. I'm God and I've killed everybody. Or the devil. Or the devil, yeah, you could use the word devil or demons or whatever you want to call it. Mostly the devil in your world. It's well, okay, I'll play, I'll play. There's no, there's no game I can't play. There's, there's no, no game, game I haven't played. You are the devil. Yeah. Okay, I'll be the devil then. Along with Hitler, cult leader Charles Manson is today's top satanic celebrity. Yeah, I, uh, I, I chopped up nine hogs and I'm going to chop up some more, you I'm going to kill you as many as I can. I'm going to pile you up to the sky. Responsible for at least nine ritual murders, Manson is revered by many modern-day devil worshippers who have adopted his philosophy of the mass extermination of those they consider unfit to live. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. Nicholas Schreck visited Charlie at San Quentin, keeps a picture of his hero on his apartment wall, and displays a lock of Manson's hair as if it were a sacred relic. A bloodbath would be a cleansing and a purification of a planet that has been dirtied and degraded for too long. David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, was also a Satanist, the serial killer who terrorized New York while murdering five young women and seriously wounding at least six others. Berkowitz was deeply involved in bizarre rituals. So was Henry Lee Lucas, who told police he murdered his girlfriend, his mother, and others across the country all for a satanic cult. Why do they want to kill people? They're supposed to be for the reincarnation of the devil. And when a series of ritualistic rapes and murders hit Southern California, it should have come as no surprise that Richard Ramirez, the alleged night stalker, worshipped the devil. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail a belief system that exalts sadistic murder, torture, ritualistic suicide, and racial purity. This has historically been a sacred day, a day of purification, a day of hell and fury. We mourn not its victims, we honor its victors. In closing, I would remind those here that murder is the predator's prerogative, and there is no birth without blood. Berkowitz, Lucas, Ramirez, and Manson are the all-stars in the halls of infamy. But the vast majority of these ritual murders are not the work of the celebrated psychopaths. There are literally hundreds of cases most of us have never heard of. Like this satanic murder in Denver, Colorado, where the victim was handcuffed, chained, and slaughtered. Authorities claim that before he died, the victim participated in drinking his own blood. Or this diabolical example in the city by the bay. Here in a rundown San Francisco neighborhood far from the tourist attractions and the Golden Gate Bridge, a satanic cult committed crimes of incredible brutality. This is the story of that cult and of its leader, a devil-worshipping murderer named Clifford St. Joseph. The body was tucked underneath the front wheels on the curbside, wrapped in yellow blankets and tied with uh, guitar string. What was the condition of the body when you found it? It uh, had a number of unusual wounds on it. Uh, one of the most unusual things was a design carved into the chest of the individual. And once we examined it more closely, it was an upside down pentagram. The Devil's Pentagram, the inverted five-pointed star found on the unidentified corpse of St. Joseph's victim, is apparently the principal signature of Satanists. Like a recurring nightmare, it shows up at crime scenes and in their graffiti everywhere. At St. Joseph's apartment, where this grisly murder was committed, I talked to Ed, a fringe member of the cult, and the state star witness. What was going on in this apartment? They uh, asked me if I had ever thought about killing somebody just to watch him die, and they asked me if I would like to join a satanic cult. Ritual crime was apparently a regular occurrence at this apartment. In this case of torture and murder, the victim has never been identified. For purposes of this case, he was called 
John Doe, number 60. The first cut would be to the lips that sealed the person's mouth for all eternity. They also poured wax, I guess, in the eyes, and that sealed their eyes for all eternity. They did much more to John Doe, number 60, but we'll spare you the details. Caught and convicted of murder, kidnapping, and ritual abuse, St. Joseph and another cult member are currently serving long prison sentences. Ed remains free although he claims only to have been a reluctant participant in the murder of John Doe 60. He does admit bringing a teenager here to be chained up and ritualistically abused. How can you say you have no guilt when you bring a 17-year-old kid in here, you help shackle him to a radiator, and then participate in his torture and sexual abuse? Well, I never participated in torture, and no torture was allowed of him. You were having sex with a kid who's chained up. What are you talking about? Well, Ricky, first of all, likes that type of sex. What was going on here is a, a nightmare. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a nightmare. Are there devil worshippers, are there murderers involved in this particular case still at large? In this particular case, yes. We do know of, of we've had one person identified, one man, other man identified, who was present during this particular homicide. Do you think that this ritualistic stuff is spreading? It's all over the United States and probably all over the world because it's just something that people are experimenting with now. Oh. Satan means whatever I'm looking at, whatever I want it to mean. It's on my forehead. It's, it's, me, on, it's me if I can get up on that highway. It's everything that human beings are, don't understand. It's all their fears. It's what they're not sure of. You dig what I'm saying? Satan to me would be God. That man is so repugnant. All of these satanic murderers are. The acts that they have been convicted of committing are so horrible that the question could fairly be raised again, why are we doing this broadcast? We are doing it, ladies and gentlemen, because it's our feeling that these cases are too often overlooked, too often underreported. We think that there is a widespread problem here that you deserve, that you need to know about. Joining us right now via satellite, we have another convicted satanic murderer. His name is Charles Gervais. He is currently serving a life sentence in Angola Penitentiary in Louisiana. Mr. Gervais, why, in Satan's name, did you hammer and strangle to death an innocent person? Did you really think, sir, that they were going to give you 10,000 souls, this devil? Um, well, Raldo, I can't talk about my case. Get to the point about Satanism, Charlie. Okay. It's, there's a lot of confusion in it, and it's mostly people that really don't understand. Listen, what about this 10,000 souls, Buster? That's what I want to know about. Well, that's what I've got into Satanism for. Why? Why? Because it possessed power. Where were you going to get this power? Where were you going to use this power? In hell. In hell. You're going to kill a person on earth to get the power of 10,000 souls in hell? Are you sick? No. Why aren't you condemned to die? Why aren't I? Yeah. Did you hmm. use Satanism as a defense? Yes. Ted Gunderson. FBI veteran. Former head of the regional office in Los Angeles. Is there a network of these satanic murderers in this country, do you allege? I cannot say that there's a network of satanic murderers. I can say that based on information furnished to me by confidential sources and informants, based on interviews with dozens of uh, uh, survivors from the satanic uh, operations uh, through the years, satanic beliefs, etc., I can say that there is a network of these people across the country who are very active. Uh, they have their own rest and relaxation farm. Um, they are in contact with each other. It ties in loosely to the drug operation. It uh, ties into motorcycle gangs. And it goes on and on. They have their own uh, people who are specialized in surveillances and photography uh, and in assassinations. After this commercial break, we're going to have the anatomy of a satanic crime, showing you why law enforcement has had such a difficult time coming to grips with the strange, shadowy world of satanic crime. Stay with us.